Jim and I are now joined by Charles Hornig, who is running for the planning board. Um, Charles, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, as we spoke off camera, you're running for your fourth term and you have been a town meeting member for 20 plus years, is that yes, right? Yes. So, and you grew up in Lexington, so you have a, obviously a, a wide breadth of knowledge about the town and about uh, being a member of the planning board. What would you say moving forward um, is uh, where you see the planning board role um, you know, as, as Lexington moves forward and what would you bring to the role? Well, I think you know, the planning board's role uh, is maybe planning to a certain extent. Uh, we certainly uh, try to do that a little bit. Planning in Lexington is a very delicate thing. Mm. We don't have a planned economy here. We, we guide very, very gently. We mm. try to take you know, what's going to be happening, the change that really is going to happen in Lexington, whether we like it or not, and try to make it to be change that we like a little bit better than, than what might happen otherwise. Mm -hmm. And why don't you just tell, talk a little bit about how many people are on the planning board, and there are two candidates running for planning board. It's, it's not a contested race, but why don't you just explain a little sure. bit about that? Well, the planning board in Lexington is elected. It has five members for uh, staggered three-year terms. Uh, we have a variety of roles under state law uh, related to planning, related to land use. We do some permitting. Uh, we make recommendations to town meeting. Uh, we don't have as much power as many people think we do, uh, but uh, we, we try to do, do the job we're given. Mm -hmm. um, town also has a professional planning department that does a very good job, right. and so we, we're relieved of, of the day-to-day the -day technical work and try to stay to the policy issues and, and mm -hmm. make, make things happen a little bit better for the town. Mm -hmm. right. You can, historically, the, the planning board has kind of approached this as sort of a design-build concept. In other words, ideas and thoughts and plans come to you, you respond to them. But in the beginning, you said something about, you know, it, you know, ideally you'd like to be planning. So at some point, there's going to be a mix of sort of having a vision for the town and what the town should look like down the road, like, for instance, what they're doing with the streetscape situation in Lexington Center. And then obviously, you're always going to have those needs to react to plans, new businesses come in, they want to do certain things, you've got to, you've got to vote on them. So tell me a little bit about sort of striking a balance with, with creating a vision for the town and then also, you know, making sure that those businesses um, get what they need uh, to, to sort of serve the community. Well, in terms of creating a vision, that's important. Uh, we, the streetscape uh, program is an example of, of an evolving issue of trying to create a vision for the center. We also put a big effort into creating a vision for Hartwell Avenue that was quite different than the right. vision from the center, mm -hmm. as you'd expect uh, four years or five years ago now, I guess it was. We also have to be flexible and realize just because it's our vision doesn't mean it's everyone else's vision. We, just because we have a vision doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. So what we do then is we say what barriers exist to making this happen? What can we do to encourage people to fill in the bits and pieces of the vision as, as they can? Uh, so in Hartwell Avenue, we did a lot of easing of permitting requirements and, and allowing additional uses so we could get, for example, more uh, convenience uses on Hartwell Avenue. People have said they really, really want a Starbucks or something like that on Hartwell Avenue. Well, we that's permitted now, but we can't build it. We have to wait for someone to come along and right. want to build it. Uh, right. And you changed the, the same, FAR, same. the floor area ratio. Well, we've allowed some increased development on Hartwell Avenue, uh, which hasn't but, necessarily but happened yet. But but we're hoping um, that that some of the the, the the building owners down there will will slowly uh, come around because I know the improvements, the sidewalk improvements, all of that is they're just sort of beginning now, aren't they? Yeah. Well, we're, the, the town has built a a sidewalk on the northern part of Hartwell Avenue. <coughs> Sorry about the cold. That's okay. Uh, town's built a sidewalk now. Um, as someone who used to work off Hartwell Avenue, I know how desperately needed that sidewalk is. Walking in Hartwell Avenue in the winter is just murder. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I think the sidewalks, it's a step forward. There's a lot more steps we need in the Hartwell Avenue Bedford Street area, but it's made it a little more attractive. We're seeing some excitement of things going on on Hartwell Avenue, especially down at the south end. In fact, mm -hmm. um, at 111 Hartwell, they've got they have renovated their buildings. They may not have completely rebuilt them, but there's been a lot of renovation. There are new tenants. There are food trucks. There's a mm -hmm. shuttle. You know, we've got. 
things going on there. Yeah. So in, in talking about Hartwell Ave and, and um, just overall commercial development, how does a positive um, kind of commercial development and, and really trying to improve the commercial development around Lexington help the taxpayers and help the town? Maybe you could talk about that. Well, yeah, where this came from is, I don't know, maybe starting about 10 years ago, there was a lot of feeling people sort of noticed that the commercial property in town was paying less and less of the town's real estate taxes, the residential property was paying more and more. And that's, there's a couple of reasons. One was that residential values are going up so fast, which I suppose is not that bad a thing for the, for the residents. But the commercial values weren't going up. And that was because the town really was not encouraging commercial development, commercial redevelopment. We have a lot of 1960s buildings on Hartwell Avenue that just no one has felt it worth the trouble to try to do anything with and they have very low rents and low values. And there was a thought that maybe we should do something to turn that around and that's what we've been trying to do. Now we didn't want to just open up the floodgates and get just anything. You know, we wanted to be sensible about it. We wanted to streamline development, we wanted to make it attractive to people who were going to build the sorts of things we wanted them to build. We think we've done that. We think right now it hasn't, you haven't seen a lot of building from that, but you've seen some building. We've seen some renovations of existing buildings. We've seen some higher rents, some newer tenants coming in uh, that we're excited about. But the opportunity is there now of someone who owned land on Hartwell Avenue and who said, felt that the market was right to build a new building would have a fast permitting process, a fast certain permitting process. It would be easy for them to get financing. They could move quickly if they wanted to. Whereas 10 years ago, it would have been a major process taking years to get, even get the permits to do a new building. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity is there and I think we're waiting for the economy now. Right. And, and in talking uh, about Hartwell, I know in meeting with Melissa uh, to, 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 lack, to, to, to talk about this um, with the town, she has so many uh, great ideas in you know, helping with transportation, trying to get you know, young people that live in the city out here working at Hartwell Ave. And, uh, is there a solid partnership be between the planning board? Do you work with the town closely in, in trying to address some of these issues? Well, as I said, you know, we have our own staff uh, who her offices are immediately adjacent to Melissa's in the Economic Development Office, right. so there is a great deal of work back and forth. Uh, the work that, mm -hmm. that she's doing to revitalize the center works with the work David Kucharski, who's our assistant planner, is doing with parking right. and transportation right now. Uh, so, no, there's very, very close work in the staff uh, mm -hmm. there. Right. right, and I know that linkage, that linkage, if you will, that's mm -hmm. going on between um, sort of linking Hotwell Ave to Alewife um, making it more accessible mm -hmm. through public transit mm -hmm. and, and even the um, you talk about the food trucks you mentioned it briefly mm -hmm. but that's become a big deal down on Hotwell mm -hmm. Avenue they're not so isolated and maybe it's a it's not necessarily a permanent solution but it's something mm -hmm. that's going on to uh, you know to work with the tenants not just the landlords down there and bring some variety mm -hmm. uh, down there um, you, you, I, you mm -hmm. mentioned parking and I know that they've, they've had at least two, and I know they're about to have their third public meeting on, on parking. I know they've been grappling with parking for decades. Um, and um, as a member, as a longtime member of the planning board, have you any thoughts on, on dealing with parking? I mean, there have been a whole variety of ideas thrown out from building a garage to changing and, you know, uh, doing a, changing the way we do our meters, um, you know, maybe heavier fines or more money to park in a certain area closer to the town, but there's an ongoing problem with parking and it, it, it's pretty much everyone's problem, um, whether you're a business owner or you're somebody trying to get to one of those businesses. Maybe you could talk a little, little bit about that. Um, well, parking in the center, has it, it reliably comes up every year, and as I say, I've yeah. been on the planning board for nine years now, and I, right. it's... Uh, we faced it a few times and we've been unsuccessful each time in devising a solution that will pass muster with the town. Uh, right now there's a, I think, a very good effort going on. Uh, the town has hired some consultants. They've, over the years they've done a lot of work, research work, collecting data, and are now in the process of bringing forward some specific recommendations to the town. Um, there is nothing in what they're doing that I dis certainly disagree with. I, I've been to the meetings and I think it's very exciting the directions that we may go. That said, 
we have to, to take it through to, to actual execution, and that's always been the hard part. Right. And uh, do you, uh, are we inching closer to any particular solution? Well, <clears throat> I can say that uh, the, the, the final meeting is coming up this week, and I certainly would encourage anyone who's interested to, to go to that meeting where they'll be talking about specific recommendations. So I don't want to say I know exactly sure. what's in that report. They've been talking about uh, largely trying to use the existing parking spaces that physically exist in the center now more effectively. Uh, even at peak times, mm -hmm. many of those parking spaces are empty. Uh, the reason is they're, they're privately owned, they're reserved for certain businesses. Mm -hmm. But trying to find a way to better use the existing spaces um, mm -hmm. You know, in a way that, that works for people, that meets the different needs of uh, someone who's coming in to do a few errands, right. someone who's coming in to do a lot of errands. I did about four errands before I came to this uh, in the center, getting rid of all of my, my center errands. Mm. Right. Or, or someone who works in the center and needs to stay for a full eight hours. Yeah. Uh, well, that, uh, that kind of leads to a, 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 I don't know if it's a question or more of an indictment of the problem you know, where a lot of business owners have employees who are taking up those those spots. I mean, that's always part of the discussion, yet it never seems to be, the business owners never seem to be really held accountable to actually getting, to get their employees to stop parking, whether, you know, and they, they say, oh, you know, certain businesses will take up the meters and um, whether it's a real estate business or, you know, the, the banks or the hair salons, uh, you know, the, their, 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 their employees come and they take the meters for hours at a time. Um, and if they just could move them out, you know, would constitute maybe a 10 to 15 percent opening up of available parking. Um, I've, you know, I've done a very unscientific, you know, sort of uh, analysis of it by just sitting there watching, and I think there's some truth to that. Um, I wonder what we have, what we can do. I mean, I know it's not your job as a planning board to, to police the business owners, but I, I, I guess I wanted to use this forum to make an opportunity to send a message because I think it's something that everybody really needs to pitch in on. So, well, and I, you know, the, the proposals I've seen that have had you know been discussed, they haven't been approved or adopted, are among other things to use pricing to start encouraging the right behavior. If we changed our pricing so that instead of a, a flat price the the street spaces were more expensive uh, than the off-street spaces perhaps that would encourage people who spend a lot of hours in the center like the employees to park right. off street and encourage people who spend just an hour and two at a time to park on street there are a lot of different options uh, that they've discussed uh, they've worked other places uh, heavy-handed enforcement is a very inefficient way to do things uh, right. and we're trying to make things that sort of enforce themselves right and work together. So we, we've touched upon commercial development. Maybe, um, Charles, you could talk a little bit moving on to the residential side and one of the um, big issues around, um, you know, a lot of uh, building and these kind of uh, McMansions that are going up in Lexington, the teardown issue, and how that impacts the affordable housing issue. Maybe you could talk a little bit about both those issues and, and the role of the planning board. Well, I, I think the planning board's role is, in this case, planning, trying to get the sorts of housing mix in Lexington that we want. Uh, my personal feeling is that we want to have some housing in town for a lot of different groups. We want diversity. Um, I wish my daughter could afford to live in town, and she can't right now, not on an army captain's salary. Uh, but that's the sort of people who we should have, as well as having you know, families with kids or uh, empty nesters like myself. Uh, making that happen is difficult. Um, we've done what we can in a small way, but there's not a lot of new residential development going on in town. Where, where it's happened, we've encouraged the production of a variety of sorts of housing. So, for example, there's zoning for uh, another apartment building essentially up on Woburn Street. It hasn't been constructed yet, but uh, that would provide uh, 50, you know, market rate apartments, but with underground mm -hmm. parking and uh, one-story layouts that are attractive to a lot of people who don't want to deal with stairs and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. We've, in, in residential developments that we've seen, we've always encouraged people to use the flexibility that our zoning bylaw gives us to produce not just big single-family houses. We have plenty of big single-family houses. Mm -hmm. We, in fact, still have plenty of small single-family houses, mm -hmm. too, although they are going away. Uh, mm -hmm. But we 
um, have been trying to produce oh, maybe a duplex here, townhouse there, a little bit more density here to preserve some open space. Yeah. Well, let me ask you then, you know, um, I've seen in Bedford and other similar communities um, that, you know, that there are some new duplex uh, type homes going up. Is that something that we'll see again here in Lexington? Uh, yes, very soon now. Uh, we just permitted a development on Robinson Road uh, that will be six duplexes. Okay. Um, some developers like to build duplexes, some developers don't. Uh, so you'll, you'll always get a mixture. There's still a market for huge single-family houses and they will continue to be built. Mm -hmm. uh, we also aren't involved in teardown activity at all. We're only involved in new developments and there's a lot of teardown activity going on, especially on my street, so I'm very familiar with it. Right. Well, on, on the positive side, things. you know, with the, with what we're talking about, you know, we, we also have had, you know, very um, sustaining um, property values. And, you know, so I think there's, yeah. you know, two sides of the coin to look at, at this issue. Just one more thing, and I know that we're, we're pretty much at the end of our time, but the, um, you know, there's a development on Lowell Street that was, I think it was a 40B development okay. that's fairly recent, you know, very narrow streets, the, 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 um, and, and I guess what I'm getting to is um, this is the, when we don't plan like we have here in Lexington, we, you know, we've met our 10% 10 10 threshold so that we no longer are open to 40, 40B. Um, the, um, I know a lot of people say, how could something like that get built? All those units are on top of one another. It's so, so densely built. Um, the streets are so narrow, it had to be a one-way street going around. Um, we're not going to see any more of that, will we? Do you know the uh, development we, well, I'm talking about? Yes, I do. I'm familiar with the development you're, you're talking about. Uh, I've, been at, I've talked to people who live there who very much like it, so yeah. I, I don't want to be very negative about okay. it. Um, it's, it's a different sort of housing than most of Lexington. Mm -hmm. um, and it was right affordable, now, right? No, it, it has some affordable units, 25% uh -huh. okay. affordable units. Okay. Yeah. So the state law. There, there's a state law that says that if you don't provide enough affordable units on your own, we're going to make you by mm -hmm. um, letting people go outside of your zoning bylaw. And that's how that development and some others in town were built. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Judges Road and uh, mm -hmm. some on Garfield Street near where I live. Sure. Um, right now, Lexington is at 11 percent by the particular measure that they use. By the way, it doesn't mean 11 percent of Lexington's housing affordable, about 5 percent is, but the formula they use gives us 11 percent. Um, which means right now someone couldn't come in and build something like that without our permission. Now we do do 40B developments, you know, with a town's agreement occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, largely from Lexhab, mm -hmm. but they're very small. Right. That could change if the town stops encouraging the building of affordable housing one way or another, it could change fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell uh, what will happen uh, over time uh, with the market. There's a housing production plan that was developed for us by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council that the planning board just accepted last Wednesday mm -hmm. and it will be going to the Board of Selectmen that talks a lot about the issues. Uh, we, we don't agree with all the demographic predictions in it uh, but we don't, I think the planning board agrees with the recommendations it makes, which are to continue to produce mm -hmm. affordable housing, at least at a level to maintain the existing uh, amount of stock. And, and I personally would like to see us not just look at that one number, but to look at other numbers too and look at underserved communities. I happen to think people who make between 80 and 120 percent of the area media income, affordable housing is for people under 80 percent of area media income. Mm. There are a lot of households who make more than that who still can't afford Lexington. Right. Right. Then there's households who make a lot of money and can't afford Lexington. And, and, but there's an underserved community in the middle there that we also have to keep an eye out for. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I, I want to thank you for mm. your years of service so yes, far. Yes, I was just going to yeah. say that. You know, you've, you've been a, a public servant for so many years, and so we wish you, uh, it's not a contested race, so <laughs> we'll still wish you the best of luck in, in all the, um, the uh, issues that we talked about. You have a lot on your plate moving forward, and we really appreciate the time um, that you dedicate to this no, role. Appreciate an opportunity to talk to you and to your audience. For Thank people that have more questions about these issues, um, where can they go? Can they contact you? Is there a planning board? You know, for people that want to attend some of these public meetings or have questions. Okay, so the planning board meets um, about two Wednesdays a month 
uh, in the town office building. Uh, the meetings are posted on the town's website. Uh, the next one is not this coming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, but mm -hmm. for people watching the this later. The public calendar, they can just go to the It's on the public website. calendar. Right. Right. Uh, we'll also have public hearings on all the big zoning changes coming up to the Springtown meeting on February 26th, which might be interesting to people. Our meetings are broadcast live on Lex Media, uh, so you don't have to come to the meeting. You can right. uh, listen, listen to it on TV and watch what we do. Um, people who have practical questions about how can I do this or could I do that are probably best served by talking to the planning department, the town staff, uh, who just call town hall or, or go there and you can certainly check in with um, a very good staff if you have a political question. I'm currently chairman of the planning board. I'm happy to answer questions from people who want to give me a call or write me a letter. Right. Um, and I'm sure all the other board members are also perfectly willing to talk to people. Great. Well, thank Charles. you, Charles Arnick, so much. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here, Charles.